My name is Gassia Mikaelian, and I'm reporting to you from the San Francisco Bay Area in Northern California. I'm a part of KTVU Fox 2 in the Bay Area, and I'm happy to welcome to this conversation David Castagnola. You're the Chief Operating Officer of BlackBerry. Let's talk about security. Thank you for joining me, David. Thank you for having me. So many of us are working from home, and while I joke that I wish I had my IT guy here at the home office, it turns out that many of us are figuring this out for ourselves, and I imagine problems are arising. They are, and you know, home networks and home systems are inherently insecure. So now we're all been pushed into an environment where we have to understand how to secure Zoom, how to turn on privacy features and, and secure login information, just basic uh, you know, security pro protocols just to enable us to do our work uh, and communicate with friends and family with privacy and with security. And that even gets further compounded when you talk about corporate America and all the corporate information that, that organizations are trying to secure. It's a, un, it's a daunting problem right now. Let's start on the most personal level. I have uh, read reports of people being Zoom bombed. This can happen, you know, let's say we're holding a virtual city council meeting or even just you and I talking. How does Zoom bombing work, one? And then number two, how can we guard against it? Well, certainly be careful what you tweet out on the internet uh, you, with your Zoom login information being present. So just being thoughtful about understanding the controls within the tool, uh, setting them on, turning them on, being careful about who you share that information with. And, and, and just basically understanding good hygiene from that perspective is, is fundamental and don't assume uh, that people wouldn't want to come in and Zoom bomb or eavesdrop or to do anything. Just assume the worst, prepare for the best, understand how to use your tools. So you're saying don't tweet, hey, I'm gonna jump on a Zoom call with my girlfriends at 10 o'clock tonight to discuss the new Bachelor episode. You're saying even just saying that, you know, if I give someone the time and my name, they could figure it out? Well, I think certainly in a lot, like right now in our Zoom, there's a Zoom meeting ID that's on my computer. So some folks are doing screen grabs or taking pictures and sharing that. And there you go, you have your Zoom ID number out there. And I think the British Parliament was guilty as charged on that one item. So just being careful and thoughtful. Got it. And so you really make it sound like the burden is on the consumer when it comes to seeking out these privacy tools, such as that Zoom password. Well, the burden is on everybody, right? It's on the tool makers to help the the, all of us understand how to use the tools, make sure they're secure. You know, there was a lot of information this week about Zoom and uh, security protocols in their tool. Their CEO has been very contrite and taking action on it. And it's up to us to understand how to use them. It's also up to us to understand that this is an ideal time for scammers who love to feed on urgency and crisis to send emails that look very legitimate, hoping you click on them, and then you can get caught up into some sort of phishing or uh, ransomware type activity. So that is just one aspect of it. And then again, all these organizations have sent their employees working from home. And many organizations don't have enough computers for their employees to work at home. And they're using home computers to log into the corporate network, which is a whole nother paradigm that we're busy helping organizations solve right now. And I imagine a lot of large corporations are turning to you and saying, this kind of snuck up on us. We had to send our workforce at home. Tell me about the dynamic of using a home computer for your work, especially if your work is sensitive. Thankfully, we've been doing business with a lot of large banks and governments who have been preparing for such events like a pandemic. And we've been building some tools that can, in effect, turn a home computer into a fully secured corporate device, uh, maintain privacy, security controls, maintain uh, the integrity of the uh, corporate information. And we can do that quickly. And we've been busy working uh, long hours over the weekends helping our customers solve those problems. But this is a journey for everybody. This is not uh, an event. This is a process that uh, organizations, all of us, are going to continue to have to, to look at. Because, again, working at home is a very insecure environment. Let's pull out a little bit and take a larger view uh, and really examine the threat globally. Mm. Um, certainly, there are countries that might be very interested in getting information contained here in the United States on a larger level than just you and I talking through Zoom. How might that be um, more likely to happen in a time such as the coronavirus pandemic? Well, this is, it's absolutely at a highest level right now. Our corporate cybersecurity professionals are, have been the unsung heroes. Uh, within the next year, there's going to be three and a half million unfilled cybersecurity positions 
in the marketplace. So there, it's, a, it's a market with 0% unemployment and constantly ramping threats. And what we hear about in the news is only a portion of all the activity that's happening. In fact, our research group at BlackBerry just released a report uh, today that talks about uh, 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 threat actor groups that have been compromising dozens of organizations for over 10 years undetected. So the nation state threat actors have different motives, Russia, South Korea, China, but this is a great opportunity for them to leverage this work from home to gain ongoing persistence into these corporate networks. And is that, situation. is that because, you know, my home computer is inherently less secure than what my boss gives me at the office? That's correct, yeah. So there's been all sorts of reports. Some home modems have had vulnerabilities in them. Uh, home, secured, home computers are largely unpatched and not updated, maybe not running the, the right security protocols, and in many cases are already compromised. So the threat actors are already sitting there and now you turn it on and connect to the corporate network and it's actually rather easy for them to get on the corporate network undetected. So what's your best advice to someone like me who has not been using the computer as much up until let's say two weeks ago and now it is their lifeline to their work and to the outside world? Well, your IT security professionals in your organizations have been busy. They've been reaching out, uh, you know, connecting with the suppliers to get some additional uh, help labor help, service help, uh, support help. That's the number one thing. If uh, any corporation out there is struggling with this, there's plenty of folks like us that are willing to help you. And then from a base perspective, home users just need to be very wary and very careful. And now is a great time to make sure your operating system is up to date, you don't click on the bad links, and that you understand the tools you're using. One of you know, the best pieces of advice I got years ago was if you get, you know, you get the email, right? Uh, you know, oh, Apple wants to give you a $50 iTunes card. And I think, great, 50 bucks. But someone said, click on the address that sent it to you. And often it is just a bunch of numbers and letters and it is not, you know, Apple itself. So that's tip number one that I still use today. And then number two, if, if it's my bank contacting me, I close out the email and I call the lady at the bank myself and say, hey, do you need to reach me, Susie? Because I got this email. Do, do those two tips still work? They absolutely do. And being in security for over two decades, like I have been, I'm extremely paranoid based on what I've seen and what I've heard. And some of these emails even get me to stop and think sometimes. They're very well written. They're very crafty. These adversaries are very smart. They're unrelenting. Right. And finally, David, what do you think is going to change once the country emerges from the coronavirus pandemic and things get back to normal? What do you want people to take from this experience as it relates to their digital security? Well, I think it creates more awareness on a problem that's been present now for years and for decades and is not going away. And, and so I think what we're seeing now in the future is it'll be a new normal. And we're now looking at the work as home as the new enterprise. And so now that we can solve that problem, literally securing a home computer and giving it unbridled access to a corporate network, I think this is gonna be an eye opener for, for many organizations that think about how they do business differently gain an edge, gain an advantage, be able to operate more efficiently and quickly. So it will be interesting times, and I'm sure we're all looking forward uh, to getting into that new normal and, and getting back to work. I mean, I'll be honest, I think a month ago, I would have told you, oh, there's no way that I could work from home. But guess what? My newsroom got it done, and newsrooms across the country are getting it done. So David Castagnola, Chief Operating Officer of BlackBerry, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Of course, and if you'd like more information on this topic, you can learn more at coronavirusnow.com.